What does it matter where we get our Christmas tree? Charlie Brown, are you off your medication again? I know the perfect place, the Curtin Way Christmas Tree Farm on 11 Briarcliff Lane in Spencer, Massachusetts. Starting Black Friday, they will continue selling every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday until December 24th. Fridays and Saturdays open at 9 a.m. and close at dusk. Sunday, they'll be open 12 noon until dusk. And their trees are really reasonably priced from $25 to $35. If their trees look like this, I'm sold. Oh, damn it, Charlie Brown. The Curtin Way Christmas Tree Farm, located on 11 Briarcliff Lane in Spencer, Massachusetts. Open for business Black Friday, starting at 9 a.m. Tell your family and friends. Also, anthropomorphic dogs who think they're World War I flying aces are also welcome. Because of the following special program, Rhoda will not be presented this evening. Hello and welcome to the Mental Suppository. I'm Brett Herholtz. And I'm Andrew Shanley. And tis the season for specials. The holiday specials. And uh, I think all of us, I think all of us remember between Halloween and Christmas or even maybe New Year's, there were just so many holiday specials that, you know, as kids, you just look forward to, which we're going to get into all of those right after a new movie coming out, just in time for the holidays. Coming this Christmas, a new hero for our times is making himself heard. Look, up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's... Oh, no, God! God! It smells like broccoli and egg salad got into a fist fight. It's super fart. Clark, are you super fart? Um, gee, Lois, I don't know what you're talking about. What was that? I, I think super fart's outside. You're right. He blew a hole in the wall. Great Caesar's ghost. It smells like a pig shat in here. You will believe a man can fly with flatulence. Up. Up and away! <laughs> ah! Ah! Dude, seriously? Don't miss Super Fart, rated P.U. So, I don't know about you, but whenever you hear, if I was to say the words, a CBS special presentation, can you immediately hear the music in your, in your head? That's the one. Yeah, pretty much. And it's one of those things, whenever that music came on, you knew something good was was coming. It was like, you know, it's like, sure, the Duke's a Hazard or or Fall Guy was being uh, preempted that night, but you knew you were going to be watching, you know, the Peanuts or or what, you know, you know, back when we started, it was, you know, I think the first ones I remember is like a Charlie Brown Christmas and oh, yeah. it's the great pr pumpkin Charlie Brown. But it's like you kind of knew the beginning. It's like uh, the uh, the holiday season started with it's a great uh, sorry you knew the holiday season started with it's the great pumpkin charlie brown that's yeah, the one that kind of started the season yeah especially for the longest time i i'm sure you know from like when i was like you know when i was very young to like maybe the age of six or seven that was like the big one you wanted to see every year that was a pretty big one um i think obviously the great pumpkin was definitely one of those like classic you know Charles Schultz, Peanuts. It was like the gateway cartoons. to the holidays. Yeah, it pretty much was. Like how? Like I remember there was there was not only just um, not just that, but there were also a lot of other like small little Halloween specials. Like every once in a while, every TV series would have a Halloween episode. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. You know, I'd forgotten it about wasn't that. just it wasn't just the specials. Like every episode, every TV show had like a Halloween episode, and. But it the CBS like, specials, those are yeah. the ones people remember. It's like, oh, God, yeah. You know, that's the ones that, you know, suddenly it's like the great pumpkin Charlie Brown came on. And it's like, damn it all. You just wanted to go trick or treating. Absolutely. And Absolutely. damn it all. You just felt, you know, it's like you felt bad for Charlie Brown because he was just like those early specials. He was just absolutely positively shit on by everybody. It's like, oh, God, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he wasn't able to let, he didn't let him kick the football. Oh, I know. Jeez. You know, 
It was horrible. You know, it's like one of those things. He's given a rock throughout the entire thing. It's like everybody else gets candy. He gets a goddamn rock. I get a rock. It's like, what the hell, man? There was you know, a, what did this kid do? There's a really good What did he rock. do to you to give you I know. A, to give like, him a how rock? does he get a freaking rock? At the end of the night, he gets a bag full of rocks. It's like it's like, why don't you just give him a bag full of rat poisoning? What are you trying to tell him? Here get here's some uh, here's some here's some uh, pack of smokes. Oh, I know I know it. And it's like between then and like Christmas, it's like there was always these like these well, as a kid, they were great, you know, holiday yeah. specials. You know, you, of course you had a Charlie Brown Christmas, which oh, yeah. was the I don't know which one I remember first. I don't know if I remembered uh, seeing a Charlie Brown Christmas or it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown. I feel like it's the great Ch- pumpkin Charlie Brown is the first one I remember. Well, but they kind of mesh together. There's also the Thanksgiving special. That one came out. Mu- that one came out much much after those ones, but still, yeah, yeah it was kind of fit into the blend. And I feel like that one, it was like less let's shit on Charlie Brown. I mean, you know, the way you know Lucy was just like in an absolute. Yeah. Or to him. It's like at least you felt like Peppermint Patty somewhat liked him, you know. <laughs> hey, Chuck, it's it's Thanksgiving. We're all coming over to your house. And oh, like, good fucking grief. <laughs> and uh and they show and they show up at his house and he's got like toast and popcorn. Because <laughs> what the hell would a kid make? You, you know, you don't expect him to make you like turkey and gravy and stuffing. And this you know, is the like, time before and pop before, yeah, popcorn, yeah. And this is before microwave popcorn. So I like, know, so they they're doing it like J- Jiffy Pop style, Liver- living dangerously. Yeah, and Snoopy's doing all the, all the, uh, all the cooking, <laughs> and nobody, nobody, discusses the elephant in the room at the end of the episode with Snoopy and Woodstock eating turkey. Yes, yeah. Woodstock is eating turkey. People, if you don't know what Woodstock is, I'm not talking about the 1969 hippie uh, music festival. I'm talking about uh, Snoopy's little yellow bird friend. Who is sitting there with Snoopy eating turkey? He's a cannibal. Well, I was just going to say, if you notice a lot of the old cartoons, you know, <laughs> Woody Woodpecker, Daffy Duck, Donald Duck, they they're yeah. all e- either eating chicken or turkey. And you're thinking to yourself, it, it, you know, it's it's like one of those things you don't realize till you get much older, and then you realize it's like, you know, putting human characteristics into a cartoon character isn't always necessarily. Uh, works out the right way especially when you get to that age where you can sort of start rationalizing these things which apparently uh, one of the uh, later looney tune cartoons uh, i think the uh, the looney tune show it came out like the mid 2000s kind of uh, uh made mention that by having porky pig eating a uh, pizza with uh pepperoni <laughs> on it and bugs and daffy are just sort of lo- yeah just looking at him like you're eating that yeah. <laughs> but still i mean as kids i mean these were these were I, I looked forward. To, I always loved and looked forward to like the, the specials. And I mean, there was other ones like you know you had Frosty the Snowman and oh yeah, I mean, well you know Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Those and, guys are the Rankin Bass. Oh, ones. Rankin Bass basically for the longest time seemed to monopolize the whole uh, holiday special. They were like thing. gold standard, and they still are because people still like like when is it when is it broadcast on the every year and everything else like that. Like now yeah. you can stream it, but oh absolutely, but, but like you know. When you were when you were like a back kid, before streaming and back, back before, before streaming kids. and on demand stuff and anything else like that, you had to actually wait until yes. it was available. Yeah, I mean, you waited maybe a whole you know you waited a whole year, people, to want you know to to watch this one special. You've probably seen a million times, but still, it, it was just it just becomes part of that tradition, you know. Absolutely. You, 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 you know, you wait. You know, you wait for the Charlie Brown, spe- the Charlie Brown Christmas. You wait for the. It's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. And even later on, as we got, as you know, we started going into, you know, our, our started getting a little bit older. Other, you know, they started introducing other, you know, cartoon specials like the the Garfield uh, Halloween special, which I absolutely, I, oh, yeah. I, I admit, I loved as a kid. Him and Odie going out uh, as pirates trick or treating, and they had kind of a, <laughs> they had actually kind of at the time it was kind of for me it was kind of scary the whole spooky thing where they end up on an island trying to get candy and like the, the uh, cabin boy is still living on the island supposedly on the night that the uh, the pirates buried the treasure and they're supposed to return a hundred years later, and Brandon. then you have the ghosts coming in and yeah for me as a kid i i i was a, i was a pretty easily scared kid anyways but i found that very spooky at the time and i actually <laughs> ended up watching it on streaming streaming recently it's like yeah the artwork in that is kind of 
kind of terrifying. And they do a really, and honestly, they do a really good job with that. You know, you know this, this was in the days when Garfield was actually fun. This, like, these in the days when, when children's entertainment was traumatizing to kids. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You know, that was, that's the truth. It was, it was like every single thing. I mean, we had the dark crystal for crying out loud. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, we had, we had like PG rated movies that like literally if I showed them to kids today, they were like, Oh my God, it scared the crap out of me. They wouldn't be able to handle it. But going back to the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, I just thinking back to it, it actually had some really good layers to the story because it wasn't just focused on the kids. You had this whole little sub story with uh, Snoopy as the world war one flying ace. Oh yeah. And I always, I always loved it in the comics when he, you know, Snoopy would kind of like uh, tap into his imagination and, and in this one he just happened to be you know fighting the red baron on halloween and you have this whole little sub story of he's been shot down and he's trying to find his way you know in his imagination he's trying to find his way through enemy enemy lines and i feel like that part of snoopy i always kind of uh sort of uh connected with because i you know i was very imaginative as a kid and so him getting into these like little little adventures in his in his head where he ends up at the the halloween party and uh there's that the, the great scene where he's uh he ends up by the piano with Schroeder and Schroeder's playing like music and at one point you know Snoopy's kind of happily uh, dancing along and then he starts playing something sad and Snoopy starts crying and then he immediately goes back into like the happy music but it's like in it's like that whole that whole uh, imaginary story I thought was a great a great subplot and of course you ended up having the whole thing with Linus you know you know believing in this uh this this uh being the great pumpkin who he believes is going to you know uh fly out of a pumpkin patch and uh give ch toys to all the uh, good boys and girls of the world i kind of feel for linus because it's like the whole thing all the kids are kind of making fun of him for his beliefs and he's trying to stick by it even though you know you know he's kind of set up for failure but still you, you know you do he was feel for ostracized exactly believing I'm the true nature of halloween i mean honestly even he even charlie brown was making fun of him in that one so you have to really feel for feel for them if i if i look back on those specials though there were a yeah. lot of different specials um you know and 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 some some crazy some crazy things happened in the 80s where like even max headroom got us got a special i don't remember that one no yeah he did he got us uh, of course he did ma 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 max headroom you know the guy in the tv that's like yep. the suit guy he actually got a special um you know like other tv celebrities got specials and everything else like that it was like a normal thing back then uh but rank and bass definitely they had a ton of them oh absolutely um, i mean and, and it was a mix really, it was like stop motion yeah was, as well as uh traditional animation it was a lot there was a lot of them that were stop motion the ones that really in my view that are the better ones are the stop motion ones oh i, I just agree because too. just because there was so much that had to be put into it and there was so many, especially for Christmas, just the Rankin Bass ones. Here's some of the basic ones that they came out. And this wasn't actually claymation, I think people should know. This is what's called like, it was kind of like a puppet animation where they would yeah. actually make the puppets out of, uh, you know, they build a, a skeleton and make them out of felt and have the so, clothes as, so as opposed to Gumby. So here's the air. Damn it. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yes. Little Drummer Boy. Okay. Um, Santa Claus is coming to town. Here comes Peter Cottontail. I think this is like an. I think that was like a. Let me see. It was a different one. That was an Easter was an one. Easter one. Yeah, it was an Easter. You're, one. We are a little out of the uh, this season. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. They kind of mix together after a while. It kind of. It's kind of like that. Uh, the uh the year without a Santa Claus. Oh gosh, yeah. That. It's the, funny. A lot of the, it's not that a lot of these are forgettable, but there are so many of them that you know. The first kind of get lost in the snow, shuffle. Uh, the first Christmas snow. The Little Drummer Boy Book 2. Apparently, they made a sequel. Electric um, Boogaloo? I guess. Rudolph's Shiny New Year. Yep, okay. I remember that one. I don't think uh, I ever saw that one, no. Let me see. They had... Uh, let me see. Nestor, the long-eared Christmas donkey, was another Oh, God. One. Is that like supposed to be like Dominic, the uh, Christmas donkey? I, I guess. Which, uh, uh, for those of you, yeah, there was a song in the '60s called "Dominic the Christmas Donkey," and uh, yeah, but you know, your parents might, your parents or grandparents Rudolph, might remember it. Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. That's a little out of uh, out of season, but still, yeah, I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, they do still did the Christmas thing. Two, Jack Frost was another yeah. one. Uh, Pinocchio's Christmas, and 
I think this one's another one that really kind of doesn't get a lot of press from Rankin Bass. Uh, the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold, if you're familiar with that. I am. One. I have never heard of that one. That That's one... a great one. That's actually a really, really good one. Um, <laughs> that that one is actually it's an Irish kind of like thing. It's really good. You yeah. Check that one out. If you um, haven't, Google it. It's worth it. The other one people remember is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which, you know, you had really great collaboration between Chuck Jones, who did some of the some of my favorite Looney Tunes cartoons ever. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Seuss, who is one of the probably one of the greatest uh, children or best known children's authors yeah. ever. And you had it being read by uh, horror great Boris Karloff. And I think I, it was read like maybe a a year before a year a few a few years before he passed away but but then just to hear him you know talking but the grinch hated the who's and whoville you know that great voice he had you know oh well everybody remembers the song oh yeah you're a douchebag <laughs> mr grinch so you many really people are a chode there's like a there's a bunch of like uh people that came out with like metal versions of you know the I grinch think song I think the band Sixpence None the Richer might have uh, covered that as well. So you have a lot of like, which it's funny because it's like I've heard like covers of like the the theme to a Charlie Brown Christmas as well, and it's like it's like this really emo theme. I've heard a version of it. I have heard of it in a, a grocery store. I was like, what the hell am I listening to? It's like, uh, it's like uh, what I forget the name of. I, I just forgot the name of the band. Uh, it was one of those uh, emo bands that that came out. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, it was like the I don't know if it was like the Good Charlotte version of uh of Good Charlotte version of uh Christmas Time is Here by you know the uh, uh for a Charlie Brown Christmas, but oh yeah yeah yeah. But that was the other thing I think was the other great thing about a Charlie Brown Christmas was the music they chose for it. I mean to actually you know go in and say you know we wanted to use a a, a jazz trio for the the uh, the soundtrack to the uh, that whole special I think it was a great choice because Vince Guaraldi just fit that world really nicely his music yeah that was pretty good yeah and it was very I, simplistic too because it's like if you look at the Peanuts characters they're very simplistic as well but just to have that sort of very soothing jazz sound as the uh, soundtrack throughout the well, the, the other thing too is like just some of the things that they actually did in that in that special. Oh, absolutely! Like with yeah. the with the the, the the tree that that he got he gets, which basically is just like a twig. Yeah. Charlie Brown's <laughs> fucking friends are such assholes. And they get and he just basically puts one ornament on it. Yeah, you well, killed it. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna say it here and now. They they force him to go out and get a tree. He gets a tree he thinks is nice. And then they all just like make fun of him, laugh at him, and mock him for it. And the only person who actually stands up for him is Linus, who, which actually was very, uh, I guess at the time, uh, CBS, I, I believe, I, I might have the story backwards, but I believe it was one of those things. Charles Schultz wanted uh, Linus to read, read the whole scriptural thing, the meaning of Christmas scripture, yeah. but CBS was sort of on the fence and didn't want to, but he, and, uh, Schultz insisted on it for that special. Yeah. Yeah. But it also, they, you know, just like, you know, having the kids like sort of uh, talking about commercialism or, you know, just like, you know, how the whole world's becoming very commercial was actually very funny. Just, it, I think that was always the great thing about the peanuts is they had a very, a very adult voice because if you listen to kids, you know, kids don't talk with other kids, like their kids, they talk with other kids, like their little adults. And that's the way he approached peanuts. Yeah. Now, there are other specials that are unique. I yeah. actually think that one of the most unique specials, it's still, even though it's never been rebroadcast since its original debut, is uh, one of the most infamous specials of all time. And, of course, I'm talking about the Star Wars holiday special. Oh, we can't get through that without saying that. I think we've all, at one point or another, seen a pirated copy of the Star Wars holiday special. I and remember it as a kid. Oh, I remember as a kid, my mom and dad, they, they, they got us in front of the TV and said, Hey, special is coming on. And I remember actually watching it on TV. I was too young to remember it. So I, I was just old enough. I was uh, just old enough. And I don't think I had seen star Wars at that point. 
Um, Star Wars had just come out the year prior. It was 78. Yep. And um, no one knows. Ex- I mean, the story of that is just absolutely insane. The special itself is absolutely insane. I mean, it's like you have B. Arthur, Art Carney. Uh, I think Jefferson. I think you have the band Starship. Yep, you Jefferson have a, Starship. You, you have a there. whole scene. Let me let me set this up of one of Chewbacca's relatives putting on a. I think what would be considered a VR set. And basically watching space porn? Am yeah, I Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's like this 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 very attractive woman comes on the uh Di- this, Diane this Carroll. Yes. Comes on the screen and says, I will you know, you know basically uh fulfill all your fe- or something like that. And I'm just like, the hell? Okay. We got it, we gotta kind of set up the whole scenario for people to watch. The whole story. Of this, of this show. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. There was a story? There were, yeah, I guess there was. Yeah. So basically the whole story of this is that Chewbacca and Han are going to uh, Chewbacca's home world yep. so that he can spend life day with his family. And um, so they're actually being chased by stock footage from the 1977 movie. Because and, remember, this is being shown on television. And yeah, that's so, what they have the... They have the do. they have the first movie already shot, and so that's what they did. They took yep. the stock footage from the original movie, and then they basically said, "Oh, hey, look, there's a star destroyer coming up behind us. Guess we're gonna have to go to light speed." Wee! And like they literally took footage from the original movie and repurposed it for this special. So the whole movie, the whole special. I'm not lying to you, people. You He's not people. He's not. Uh, it, it's it's takes place in in the homestead of Chewbacca's home, where his yes. uh, where his mother, his wife, and his son and his father are basically just waiting for him to show up. And his let's set this up. His his father, his son, and his father are named Itchy and Lumpy. Yeah, his yes. fa- his father is Itchy, his son is Lumpy, and his mother is Ma- his wife is Mala. The itchy and lumpy show. Oh my god! And the whole movie is then going. Rah, 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 rah. And if you think that's annoying, watch the special. I I mean I'm I'm not kidding you. The and whole, there's not subtitles. That's the and thing. There's no subtitles. You base and and then there's the interactions with other characters that they have throughout the show, that that they kind of like do bits with. Yeah. You know, you know, starring Art Carney, B. Arthur, and Harvey Corman. The, the art, the 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 uh, the B. Arthur one is actually really funny because she's yeah. like a a barmaid. Yes, and she starts singing people to leave her tavern. And yes, that's a, the other thing, people. There are he, musical numbers on. There's this musical because, numbers in this. Damn it all! The only thing Star, the original Star Wars was missing was great musical numbers. Not, not and only these that, aren't it. B. Arthur was singing to a rat. Yes. Okay, she was singing to a rat. Jefferson Starship, like they did, like a whole like trapeze little. They have a little bit where there's a trapeze group in the yes. thing. Like they have like they have a little holographic trapeze group. And it just leaves um, you saying, "The hell!" And every once in a while, you'd have like the ma- the main cast of Star Wars come in, like Luke Skywalker. He's on the phone. Hey, how you doing? Oh, they haven't shown up yet. I'm sure they'll be fine. What's that, that Arthur? What's that Arthur? <laughs> okay, I'm what? on to another movie. Arthur. What's that oh, Arthur? Hello, hello, hello. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now Star Wars has turned it to Arthur. Oh my God! And then of course they, uh, you know, let me see who else. They had Harvey Corman in there as like um, as a couple he, characters. He one did is a, a couple in, things. It, one is a guy in a bar who's like drinking out of the top of his head. I, yep. I, am I? And the other is he's doing a cooking show and he's got like extra appendages, arms, not that sort of appendage. Yep. <sighs> and then, you know, far from the truth. and then, and people, if, you know, I say Art Carney, people probably don't know who the hell I'm talking about nowadays, but way back in the 1950s, there was a show called the honeymooners, which starred Jackie yep. Gleason as uh, Ralph Cramden and Art yep. Carney as Ed Norton. And they were, they were very popular and very famous at the time. You dang Zoomers and Millennials not wa- read, watching boring shows from the past like us oh old my farts. Gosh. But yeah, that was... 
I ended up seeing seeing bits of it because uh, there was a comic book shop in the uh, in my hometown mm -hmm. who happened to be showing well, like the Star Wars holiday special in the store, and I just happened to come in right at the point when uh, Carrie Fisher is doing her uh, sing her her yeah, she sings. singing at the end. She sings about Life Day, like it was crazy. So, okay. and I'm sure in her mind she's saying like. Why the fuck am I doing this? So this is this whole special is like a hundred minutes long. Yeah. Okay. It's made for TV. It was on TV one time. One time. And over now, the years, George Lucas has been like, nope, it doesn't exist. Here, here's I, the I, thing, I didn't, though. I didn't the, do it. The only thing that saved it, the only thing that's kept that special alive in the memories of people around the world is B. Arthur. Not just B. Arthur. Close though. Okay. It's called the VCR. Yep. Okay, if people had not had VCRs, like my dad bought his first VCR so he could like videotape shows off of HBO and we keep them keep right. them because VHS tapes back then, if you wanted to buy a movie from a movie studio, it was like a hundred bucks. Oh yeah. And a hundred bucks back then was like ridiculous amounts of money. It still is at times. So yeah, I know. But but so, anyways, what they did was they actually started buying they people would took their vcrs they hooked them to their tvs yep they recorded it and so because the show was never shown again yes. somebody was able to get bootleg copies of the of the show one from cincinnati one from like you know o oklahoma or some place like that where they were actually able to get a really clean copy and of course it got generated down over the years right right absolutely so yeah. now every copy of that holiday special looks like it's a copy so, of the holiday special it's a copy, which is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy yeah, of a exactly. copy and it looks like absolute utter dog shit well i ended up seeing it all the way through i kid you not uh recently because because the myself. riff tracks guys ended up uh riffing the holiday special they did oh my and gosh they did and not only that it was from like i think it was from like a baltimore uh uh, state t television station so yeah. it had a lot of the original uh, commercials that were also at attached to the holiday special yep. so they riffed those as well serial killer on the loose film at 11 <laughs> so there was they actually the, the one the best riff i thought was they ended up riffing an old fruit of the lomad so you have the oh old ladies gosh. the old lady in it and the fruit appears and, and also I, I don't know if it was like mike nelson or or Kevin Murphy's like, well, I know you're supposed to be grapes and you're an apple, and what the hell are you, tobacco? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that that's how, that was. I, I personally recommend if you want to dive into the holiday special, that's probably the only way to go because if you watch it without the the, the riffing commentary, oh well, good luck. Well, I'll say this much. I mean, let's just say this much. Han Solo, uh, Han Solo wasn't very Han Solo in that. They no. defeat. They defeat a uh, a stormtrooper by basically tripping him. <laughs> so basically, it turns into a, a Laurel and Hardy meets Three Stooges sort of. Uh, oh, it episode. was it was crazy. It was like but oh my gosh. It did have one redeeming factor besides B. Arthur. It had an animation in it by Nov Novana. That's the that yeah. introduced Boba, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. And it was it was actually not a bad story. Was, you know, of course, it's an animation, so it's very simplistic, but. It had the original. It had the the cast doing their own voices in the animation, which yes, it did made it even better. And for somebody like Anthony Daniel, some of the the actors you could tell they kind of were struggling with uh, doing voiceover for animation. But for, and you could tell, you know, Mark Hamill was kind of even at that point was a pro at doing it. <laughs> and Anthony Daniels, who pretty much with C three PO, he's doing a voiceover. You know, even though he's in the costume, he's doing the voiceover afterwards and being a british actor they you know they do a lot of radio and theater so they're very good at that but uh -huh. i mean that alone i think is definitely worth watching the the holiday special because i think that i think boba fett after that was like the first like send away uh for this figure sort of uh thing you know because he was a character that wasn't in the movies and wasn't going to appear till empire strikes back which i think was wasn't even really being con which was just being developed at that point now there is one thing to be noted about this special is that it has, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um is that it was never given a full official re-release nope. or, or 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 home video release or anything no. but that boba fett cartoon the animated segment was actually released on disney plus so you that guys can, yeah 
that that was Definitely probably check the, it out. that was the only redeemable thing. But, Prob- besides B. Arthur. <laughs> I don't know. Jefferson Starship wasn't bad in that. Of course, I don't know. You know. After Grace, like just Jefferson Airplane, just wasn't Jefferson Starship Airplane. Who gives a flying <laughs> truck? <laughs> <laughs> then they just became Starship. Yes. But I mean, just I just that those were, you know, those specials. You know, watching them, they were, you know, it's like they, they were fun memories. I could still, you know, it's like you knew, you know, it's like you, you, you got started getting as a kid. You started getting excited about the holidays. You know, starting totally. in October. You know, you had to deal with, you know, it's like oh, I have to deal with school or homework or all that sort of bullshit. But it's like you knew, you know, it's like okay, Friday night, you know, it's going to be, you know, the Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown th- Thanksgiving or. Charlie yep. or, or the Garfield Halloween or later there was actually even a Garfield uh, ha, uh, Christmas special, but well, there was also even, there was even was, a, yeah, yeah there was even a Peanuts New, uh, New Year's special. So yeah, they, you know they had they had the Monopoly and all the specials. They were even doing Arbor Day for God's sake. Oh God, there were it's ridiculous how many specials they made. Um, but the other thing too is obviously there was a lot of Chris great Christmas movies that were released in the eighties. Oh yeah. Um, you know, a lot of great ones. Um, my personal favorite Christmas movie of all time has to be Die Hard. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Fun- Die movie. Hard is absolutely one of the greatest and, Christmas movies of all time. And is A Nightmare Before Christmas a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie? Wait, no, it could be both. The world may never know. Just like that Tootsie Roll you stuck up your nose. <laughs> and then, of course, there's... The other greatest Christmas movie of all time, Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Not as great as the first one, but... No, not as great as the first one, but it does it does spread that Christmas spirit. I, I think it's beautiful. But as far as older Christmas movies, I do like White Christmas with Bing Crosby and uh, Danny Kaye. Oh, yeah. And also, actually, one of my favorite uh, versions of uh, A Christmas Carol was actually the, uh, the musical version with... Uh, uh, Albert uh, Albert Finney uh, Scrooge, which had uh, had uh, Alec Guinness as uh, Jacob Marley, and quite possibly, I think actually as a kid, it was one of the most terrifying sequences because it had uh, him pulling Scrooge out into the into the air and sort of flying around, and there's all these like ghosts uh, flying around them of all the uh, spirits of the damned. And also, you had the whole, and also you had that scene with the the gro- the ghost of. Christmas yes yet to come when Scrooge faces him and it's like the it's like a skeletal face and he falls back into the grave and basically goes goes to hell and yeah. so they kind of because uh, in, in the original story it was just Scrooge uh, pleading with the uh, with the ghost of Christmas yet to come but they have this whole scene where you know he's down in hell and Marley's there and he's saying it's like oh they've already have a uh, chains made for you Ebenezer Scrooge and I must tell you they're even longer than the ones I have there's so many there's so many like versions of you know Christmas Carol out there yeah uh, you know it's but that just... one's definitely my I think one of my favorites I'm not a big fan of musicals either I'm, I'm I it, unless it's like a Marx Brothers film Scrooge is a pretty good version of that that's though. a good one that's a good one um there was also let me see there was another one Oh God, I can't even remember. I think they did one with like um, VH1 even did one where it was like a like a, a major singer or something. They just did the exact same thing. Oh, okay. You know? Was it like a pr- Christmas Carol with uh, with uh, Justin Timberlake or something like that? I forget what it was. It was back in the nineties, and like the Christmas the, the the ghost the Christmas future ended up being like the uh, an episode of behind the music of the of the of the actual character. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I thought was like, that's creative. Yes. The um, VH1 presents Ebenezer Scrooge. What a douche. Uh, I actually, there's another really good one that I like. because It's called Krampus, Krampus or whatever yeah. you want. That's a good, that's a good movie. It's when did that def- come out? That came out a couple years ago. Um, it was like uh, night 2015. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, was it one of those asylum sort of movies or? Um, no, it was a big, it was a big, uh, production. Oh, okay. I, um, I guess I, I guess I must have plotted like, it out. Yeah. It's basically a horror movie about like, uh, the, instead of Santa coming, it's, uh, the character Krampus, Krampus. You gotta love the Germans. You know, it's like, if you don't, if you're not good, Krampus is going to come and drag you away to hell. And yeah. then where will you be? 
Well, you know, isn't that like your typical German Christmas? Oh, basically, it was all the ones I remember. So, um, you know, they've they've got all kinds of crazy, kooky Christmas movies yeah. like Black Christmas, which is another one. You know, <laughs> um, but yeah. So I mean, like, if you if you go down the list of like crazy horror movies that that deal with Christmas, there's a oh, lot. Silent Night, Deadly Night, which I never saw, but I always remember the cover in in the V. The VCR stores with like Santa's hand with an axe on the chimney or something like that, you know, something creepy like you know, like that. Oh, you gotta love those. Those are it's great. like that it, definite eighties cheese. So eighties cheese, yeah. you gotta please. That's how it is. Yeah, <laughs> and I wouldn't say I'm really a Christmas sort of person. I always I always prefer Thanksgiving over Christmas just because it's I I you know, I feel especially in recent years you you feel like you know like the you know commercialism just being constantly shoved down your throats. But still, I, I do have like a, a soft spot for certain Christmas films, you know? You know, there is, of course, one uh, Christmas movie, horror movie, that absolutely is the most terrifying of all. The Sin- Santa is, Claus, the movie with Dudley Moore? Um, no, even worse. Oh, okay. Home Alone. Yeah, that one's a bad one. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, I look at that like it's a prequel to Saw. <laughs> like, honestly, what that kid puts those two guys through. I mean, it's the last act of the movie, but geez, man, those guys got ringed out and hard. Oh, I know. Gosh. And then the second one's pretty much just as bad, you know? <laughs> I suppose I can, you know, kind of uh, com- you know, kind of uh, be a little bit upset and be like, you know, it's like, ah, it's just, it's not the way, you know, the, the specials just aren't the way they they were back then. And, you know, yeah. you kind of ha- you kind of long for the, the good old days. But, I mean, people now, they're making their own, good old days as well so one of my what's your what's your favorite christmas movie of all time i'm favorite curious christmas movie of all time if you have to do it's like watch a, mo- a christmas movie over and over and over again which one would it be gosh that's a that's a hard one i can tell you think. what mine would be yeah what what would yours be mine would be a christmas story that was a good one the only problem i have with it is tnt you know plays it over and over again and i think that's the thing you can really ruin a movie on. It's like you shoot you know, your eye out. It's a it's a great movie, and I think it's got it's got such a great story. It, the story of how it was made because the uh, it was basically made by the guy who who uh, did Porky's. Yes, and the only reason he did Porky's was he wanted a Christmas story to be made. And he said to the studio, "Okay, if Porky's is a hit." you'll allow me to make Christmas stories. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, the, the movie's going to be a hit, kid, whatever. And sure <laughs> enough, Porky's was a hit. And he's just like, you know, well, screw you. I'm making my movie, bitch. <laughs> so I, I think that was a, that was, uh, you know. I, I love think that, that was, movie. Yeah. They just recently came out with a sequel. Yep. Um, a Christmas story Christmas. Which is not which is actually the third sequel because there was a really bad sequel. Yeah, we don't Christmas. count that one. Yeah, that we don't. That was terrible. That was <laughs> that was. It would have had. I think it had Will Whedon in it. Oh, I don't. I don't hate. Will I don't Whedon. even know. Uh, but I can't hate on Will Whedon. This one. This one. This one is much better. I just recently watched. Well, it's it. got the guy who played Ralphie in it. So I mean, it, it has the it origin, has that connection. Not just him, but as many of the cast as they possibly could. Yeah. Like everybody. Everybody's back. And it's just such a brilliant, it's such a brilliant coll- collection of, of the old actors back again. Right. And, you know, it's, it does feel a little bit cheesy, but it's a good, it's a good cheesy. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty well done. Well, honestly, I don't think I have a favorite Christmas movie, but I do say I do have a soft spot for a Charlie Brown Christmas. I mean, I'll always. That's a good one. That, that, that one. And even the uh, Grinch, uh, how the Grinch stole Christmas just. For that sort of a uh, mixture of all those different talents coming together to make that make that special, and I mean, it's you know you still had that very you know very Dr. Seuss feeling, even though you know Chuck Jones's uh, style of uh, style of illustration animation really you know can, he can sometimes overwhelm any production. So, mm-hmm. but those those two, I, I think you know, I still come back to as ones I, I really enjoyed as a kid, and I I still enjoy now, even though. Peanuts are can be as depressing as fuck, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they have you know they actually have like a, a new Christmas movie coming out this year that I want to see. Oh, really? With uh, David Harbor? Yeah. So I saw the 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 trailers for that. 
<laughs> it's like what was it like die hard beats santa claus the movie or, or yeah something? i mean you know it's it's called violent night yes that was it <laughs> and and like he actually plays santa and like he has it's like if you, you remember scrooge we talked a little bit about scrooge oh earlier. yeah with bill murray or right, bill murray so bill murray is this character who's like uh he's like in a tv you know executive uh yeah. network he's kind of and, the ebenezer scrooge character he's kind of lost his uh his uh, so love for christmas the whole opening of the film they end up having um lee majors show up in a movie yes and art carney's in that Art Santa Claus. Yeah. Claus. But what happens is, is that like you know basically like santa's workshop is being attacked by terrorists yes. and then like and then like um lee majors shows up and he's like fighting the terrorists along with santa and the elves. right the elves have to grab all the guns and they're shooting back at the terrorists and like you know like santa's like you know goes to lee majors like oh you've been a really good boy this year lee and like you know <laughs> that then, then they give out the title the night the reindeer died. Uh, hey, it was a really good cast to it too. I mean, there was like people. I think uh, that people, you know, you know, some people may have might have forgotten about or that were in the movie, like uh, Bobcat Goldway. Oh, Bobcat Goldway is awesome in that movie. He's freaking awesome in that film. You know what? Uh, just some people might think that like that's a Manson family Christmas or something, sir. But there was also there was also you know like uh, Ann Ramsey play I think played a uh, homeless lady in it. Uh, Carol yep. Kane played the mm -hmm. I think the ghost of Christmas Past who basically beats the shit out of Bill Murray throughout her whole time her whole sequence. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That was the, the whole the, that was like I said that's a creative way of doing it. They they really kind of modernized the story. Brilliant, brilliant group. But which they did that. I think uh, there was a Saturday Night Live writer who was kind of a nut back then. This Michael O'Donnell, Michael O'Donoghue. And he was yeah. kind of known for just be just being a real loon, and I guess it was the uh, whole scene of uh, Bill Murray, uh, you know, kind of uh, his little uh, Christmas epiphany in front of the camera, mm -hmm. wasn't actually scripted, and so he started going off. And I guess uh, O'Don O'Donohue just was just didn't like that whole scene, and he made uh, some remark was, "What was this? The Jim Jones Hour?" <laughs> Oh, so, <clears throat> Scrooge, directed by Richard Donner. It, it, um, yeah, uh, I think at that point, Richard Donner actually turned and punched him in the arm and was yeah. just like, shut up. <laughs> Karen Allen was in that movie. That's oh, my right. gosh. Yep. Oh, my so My gosh, such a great film. Yeah, I mean, it just, that was, I think that was a, that wasn't as, it was one of those films that wasn't a pre, is appreciated at the time, but it sort of uh, became more appreciated as the years went by and people sort of, understood the hum you know the humor behind it one of my favorite one of my favorite uh christmas movies of all time though i got i got a whole bunch die is, hard oh well is it stars another I, I already said star. that yeah it stars another action star oh and, uh, <clears throat> he's 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 internationally known for uh beating the crap and blowing up people it's arnold in jingle all the way jingle all the oh gosh action Dude. man or whatever turbo man turbo man thank you i got the thing and it does this and it says it's turbo time which uh, it didn't also have sinbad and phil hartman yes, it in did. it yeah phil hartman's in that oh oh my gosh i definitely miss phil hartman i mean there, <clears> there's there's somebody who went way well way too soon and was such a tragedy that was it's it's a 96 made in 96 it's yep, that's got, right the kid the kid who was the kid who was like anakin skywalker was yep. in that movie and before he was Anakin before he was Anakin and you know and it's such a it's such a great little movie and and it's basically Arnold is trying to find uh this turbo man doll for his son and that was at the time of his career when Arnold was trying trying to do more com more family friendly comedies yes it was sort of in between that time of kindergarten cop to uh that one he did with Dan Danny DeVito where he gets pregnant oh yeah junior Oh, Ju that was the name of it. Junior. Because yep. you ended oh up my... buying Turbo Man, didn't you? Yes, I, d I have it, actually. Hold on a sec. <laughs> I have to show you. Ah, come on. Where are you? Turbo Man. <laughs> Here we go. 
Here it is. For those of you who can see, can see sound, uh, he's showing me Turbo Man right now. Yes, I got this. Still I, in the box, mind you. Still in the box. This is this is how crazy a collector a person a person is. I got this thing at a Walmart, like I think it was like about a week before Christmas. Yes. And me and Andy were just like, you know, we were actually doing shooting an episode of his show. And look at this. It's got like the artwork on the back. It looks like it looks like the like the actual. Yeah, only at Walmart. Only at Walmart. Only at Walmart. And um, you know, so I got I got this whole thing, and I was it's just such a funny story. So me and Andy were like going through the aisles and we're just like, you know, doing another episode about our show, like yep. how toys are not for kids anymore. It, it's there there is a truth to it. If you look at because a lot of Todd McFarlane's toys. They're amazing, but what kid is going to play with this? What kid is going to buy a twenty dollars action? Let figure? me just say, they just—I mean, his his Batman figures, his, jeez, you know, most of it, you know, stuff he's come out with, like it, his DC line, his Spawn figures. You're just like, holy crap! In a hat, these are so. Well, I mean, I you know, it's like I have one one of the Batman the animated series figures, and they're just really well done. Yep. But yeah, so, it's, they're not for kids, though. So, so I, I went, I went, and I got. I we were in the toy aisle, and we saw them. We saw two of these things. And you didn't and have like, to fight. You didn't have to fight Arnold. We didn't have to fight with it. each other. We didn't have to kill each other to get one. And I was like, oh, that's it. We need to buy one of these, each <laughs> of us. And I don't know how much it was. It must have been like twenty five or something like that. Yeah, Ridiculous. Yeah. It was stupid money. But we go. We're walking. We're walking to the. Uh, we're walking to the registers with our freaking turbo mans, like middle-aged men with our freaking turbo man dolls. Nerd! Nerd! <laughs> and this, oh, Marge, there are two types of people in the world. Nerds and, and jocks. And I, I a jock. swear to God, I swear to God, there was like this kid. I mean, he must have been in his 20s. And he's like, oh, man, look, they got turbo man dolls. And, and he I'm was like, probably very young when that, that movie came out. So, I mean, that I'll might have been a... You, I'll bet you he went right back to that toy section and said, oh, they're all gone. Son of a bitch. Those fucking middle-aged men. Son of a again. bitch. I wanted my Turbo Man doll. But at least I'll live longer than them. Bastards. You can take my Turbo Man from my cold dead fingers. Okay, I think I did think of my favorite Christmas movie. I think it is The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, that's a good one. I think I think that was the one I just it's because it's not it's not your it's not your uh, stereotypical uh, ho holiday flick because it, it just it does have you sort of split down the middle. It's like is it a is it a Christmas movie? Is it a Halloween movie? Yeah, it's one of those movies you can watch either time. It's and still enjoy it. It's interseasonal, and, it, and it's funny because I ended up watching a uh, a documentary on it uh, with my wife. Uh, about a year or so ago when they were talking about the making of uh, a nightmare before Christmas. And I was really surprised how little Tim Burton had to do with the production. It was yeah. mostly Danny Elfman, the guy who was directing and the, and the writers who really shaped that world. I mean, Tim Burton sort of came up with the character ideas and the designs and everything, but then, you know, Warner brothers said, here, I got a dump truck full of money. We want you to make the uh, sequel to Batman. And he was just like, bye, which is, and so he kind of ended up up, uh, he was direct, you know, directing Batman, but he was also sort of keeping in touch with the production and sort of a uh, with anything they 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 needed to run by them. But for the most part, it was like that group of people, you know, that sort of shape, you know, really gave you know Tim Burton's very vague ideas shape. And yeah. I, I think that's the good thing about any really great production team or any great team of creators is it's like, you know, yes, one person could come up with a, a really good idea. But it's a group of people that end up sort of like really nurturing that idea and sort of building upon it and sort of, you know, creating a, a bigger, bigger world for these characters to sort of uh, exist in. Of course, is, this could also come, you know, come back to haunt you as well. And uh, I mean, having too many cooks and, you know, too many cooks can make the whole thing implode. But in this instance, there was just so, you know, just, you know, visually and just you know the the character designs and the 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 stop the fact that they used like a very Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer sort of uh, stop motion animation to sort of uh, do with this world and just like all the different you know crazy characters not just like a 
you know, Jack Skellington, you know, or, or, or Sa- Sally, who people, uh, mm-hmm. w- you know, sort of gravitate towards, which is kind of funny because Jack and Sally were also the names of my grandparents. Yeah. My dad's parents. And, uh, but it's also like the mayor whose face would, you know, turn around, you know, like if things are going bad, suddenly, you know, like the, this, the, uh, the, the worried politician face would, would come, come on and, or like when things are going good, suddenly it's like, you know, the, you'd be happy. And in, in the mad scientist and even the, the, the villain of the piece who was just, you know, basically a bag full of bugs. <clears throat> well, the thing about it is the one thing that really kind of makes that movie so unique Again, you you touched the Arthur. On... <laughs> no, she's not in this movie. Ah, is the um is the stop motion aspect to it? It and was. I think that was it a... really kind right. of re- reflected back to like the old Rankin Bass days. Yes, which we spoke about earlier. But also, like you know, they had some they had some really amazing musical numbers in that. That's yes, that was. And I and think like that... I said, I'm not somebody who likes musicals, but they though you know Danny Elfman. Yeah. wrote some re- and i mean this is the guy he was in oingo boingo he did some great music in the the 80s i mean it's no surprise that he's doing great numbers in this movie i mean if you've ever heard them song for weird science that's him he had yep. he had done all kinds of stuff oh absolutely actually but- a, a teacher of mine who uh who hosts a uh a radio show actually uh interviewed uh danny elfman way back in the day before he started doing movies with Tim Burton when he was still with Oingo Boingo. And he, at that point he said, he, he kind of knew he was, he wanted, he was going to be in uh, doing soundtracks. He was, he was kind of like in between doing film composing and doing music. Yeah. Um, And, and I think that there couldn't have been a better person to have that for that product. I think, I think especially for that film, it was such a, it was such a like everything just fell into place. It perfectly. did. And um, Santa was kind of a jerk, kind of a, a grouchy jerk in it, and I kind of like that. Yeah, I know that it kind of. It, that's I, the other. Thing. I'd be a grouchy jerk too if I was thrown in a, if I was yeah. like kidnapped and thrown in a sack and uh, had all these things. It's like you know, fuck you, Jack. Kidnap the Sandy Claw. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, honestly, oh. I can remember all the songs now. It's crazy. Well, with me, I mean, it just—it was recently brought back because this uh, group called Broken Peach did this really great uh, cover of uh, "This Is Halloween" from oh, the yeah. movie. And I mean, they—they're, they're, I believe, they're a Brazilian group, or that they—they—they uh, they, they do uh, like uh, covers of all these great songs, and they do a, in so every year they do like a a Halloween theme song, and they you know they do themselves up like with Day of the Dead makeup, and it just. They 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 just you know, they just they're really good at what they do and this one in particular was probably one the the song that kind of put them on the map because they didn't do it like just like the uh, the uh, Danny Elfman score they kind of ma- they kind of gave it a really hard rock sort of uh, sound to it if you ever get a chance to listen to it yeah <laughs> and also even in the video there's this uh, the, one of the singers is uh, who ends up uh, being the one to you know sing the uh, the uh, the the lines of I, I am the thing that's under your bed. Mm-hmm. It, it, she's singing it through a, a, a one a, a megaphone, but she's doing like these these uh, mo- motions during the video where she looks like she's like twitching like a corpse. And she oh, yeah. it, it look it, first you think to yourself, are they mid- manipulating this? Uh, you know, uh, through uh, you know through you know tech- technically through like uh, CGI. And you're like, no, she's actually doing this and doing a really good job. Yeah. So I recently saw another uh, holiday special that I thought was pretty good. I With B. Know. Arthur? No, B. Arthur's dead now. Sorry, she can't be in this one because it oh, just released. Darn. Oh, we're all it's, gonna we're all gonna be CGI someday. It's the it's the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yes, they they did their own sort of version of the uh, Star Wars hol- their their Star Wars holiday special. And it's like about a half hour long or so, forty five minutes. I'm not sure. But it's actually pretty funny. Yeah, I I would say if you like the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, you'll love this. They did a yeah. pretty damn good job with that. Yeah, I've seen the I've seen the trailers for it. I haven't seen it yet, but it looks like it looks like a lot of fun. It's so funny because like they're like we need to bring we need to bring Christmas for uh for Peter, and so they decide to go to Earth to get like Kevin the Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Yes. Where is the Kevin Bacon? We need to find the Kevin Bacon. He's a hero who saved the town by dancing. It 
it's funny because it's uh, you think about it, that these are all alien characters and uh of course the character of star lord who hasn't been on earth since he was like what, what nine or ten years old so these are the things he remembers like uh kevin bacon and uh david hasselhoff oh yeah it's hilarious it's yeah. it's freaking amazing so they're still making i i it, I, it looked like a great send-up of the star wars holiday special and for people who grew up in that era, I, I think it, I, I think it'll be a lot of fun and very funny for them. Yeah, you should, definitely. If people haven't seen it, they should check it out. It's, yes, it's definitely worth to watch. Everything else like that. Yeah, there's another holiday movie people might not know about that yeah, may that? need to know about: Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. <laughs> Santa Claus conquers the Martians. Oh gosh, but this yeah, this was like maybe like a, a, I don't know how much how long ago Rift Tracks found another bad uh, holiday movie and this was made by a company that just it looks like it was like you know uh it was filmed by like Mrs. Johnson's fourth grade class. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. But uh, it, it was just awful. It's, it's like basically Santa, Santa Claus is like uh, trapped in Florida, and uh, the only person to rescue him is the ice cream bunny. And I have no idea who the ice cream bunny is, but apparently it all, I think it was all financed by this, uh, or it was a promotion for this uh, uh, amusement park that was down in Florida pre Disney World called, Chi called uh, Pir Pirates World. Yeah. Because it's like the whole thing revolves around Pirates World. And there's oh even like God. a there's even like a uh, a Thumbelina section that where a a girl is walking around Pirates World and comes along the uh, the Hans Christian Andersen uh, uh, part of Pirates World and they start talking about the story of Thumbelina and it just you have to watch this this movie to believe it because I I, I saw it and I don't even believe it. Oh my gosh, I'm like looking up on this on on Wikipedia and I'm trying to find like what the what 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 inspired this craziness? Um, probably just pr promoting Pirates World. I, I don't know. Pirates it, World. It didn't work because I think they ended. I, I think Pirates World ended up uh, folding shortly after uh, Disney yeah, World. Okay. Opened. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Last movie filmed at Pirates World, which closed in 1975. Okay. Yep. That's all that I can find on IMDb for trivia. <laughs> You can usually tell how good a movie is by how much trivia it has. Yeah, but it was it was in the vein of like Santa Claus conquers the Martians, or that that one where Santa Claus fights the devil. Like, <laughs> it's that sort of badness. Well, here's another one: Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn make cameos because Barry Moran, right. Barry Moran tried to make a Tom Sawyer movie, but gave up one day of, after one day of filming. The footage was included to help pad the film. Because Maron's earlier Thumbelina or Jack and the Beanstalk in some prints was used. So I mean that's the that's the key to uh, to a shitty film padding. Yep. Padding. Yeah, lots and lots of padding. you know it's, it's something Pamela Anderson knows all about. Oh boy, this guy made some weird movies. Yeah, he also made it like a, a, a an adaptation of the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, which I also saw, which is just as terrible and uh oh, nightmare inducing as uh santa claus and the ice cream bunny let me see what this guy's known for is pagan island run swinger run morals squad and the wonderful land of oz yes <laughs> children's movie porn porn <laughs> children's movie jesus <laughs> my edward d wood jr is my idol yeah Edward D. Wood Jr. is my sa Lord and Savior. Oh my God, that's so crazy! So I think we've—I think I'm sick of the holidays already. I think yeah, we, I think holiday we, hangover. Yep, I already? think we—I think th I think this episode we've just uh, we've just worn out the holidays now. Christmas is over, man. It's been canceled. Yep, <laughs> we're just having Thanksgiving all year round. Yep, that's it. Nothing but turkey for you. <laughs> <laughs> all so, right buddy so on behalf of andrew thank you for listening to the mental suppository until next time this is brad herholtz saying
The Mental Suppository has been produced by Brett Hurholtz and Jamie Billings. Our podcast has been distributed by Scott M. Graves and M. The Media Project. Theme song has been generously donated by Mr. B. The Gentleman Rhymer. Visit his website at mrbthegentlemanrhymer.bandzoogle.com. We always want to hear from our fans with suggestions for future episodes. Send us an email at mentalsuppository at gmail.com. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Get on Santa's ho, 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 ho train! Son of a bitch! They were supposed to turn in Antarctica! Santa will show you his candy cane and his two turtle doves! Ho, 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 ho! <laughs>